God bless you, dear brothers and sisters. I believe the Lord has brought us together today because he wants to bless us. And there's always a blessing that comes from the word of God, particularly what the Lord will be ministering unto us today about. It's such an important truth that I believe the Lord wants to bless us with as we're going through the word today. Open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8 and in verse 28. Romans 8, 28. It reads thus, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. You know, this is one of those scriptures that is so profound. And you find it ref being reflected from the very beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, all through, and we get into the New Testament, this is one truth that really stands out, that for the child of God, for the one who's called by the name of the Lord, for the one who is a son or a daughter of Zion, no matter what we go through, at the end of the day, at the finishing line, it will always work for the good of the child of God. It's an amazing scripture, and many people in the Bible have experienced this, and even in our contemporary times, I'm sure many of us watching right now have a testimony, something we couldn't explain before, something that seemed so negative, we were dropped in a situation we couldn't find out, we could never phantom, phantom that something good will come out of this. You know, we've experienced crisis and we thought, well, maybe this is the end. And yet, at the end of the day, we see that in the midst of all the trials and the tribulations and the afflictions and the discouragement and all the torment and all that we go through, that at the end of the day, the Lord God Almighty brings it out for our own good. God is amazing. He works in a wonderful way. That's why all that we have to do is to just trust in the Lord. If you look at characters like Joseph, and you look at characters like Job, and you look at characters like Ruth, you look at characters like Jacob, you look at characters like David, you look at characters like Jehoshaphat and Hezekiah, you look at characters in the Bible, you find that they all went through this path that at some point they didn't understand what they were going through. They couldn't explain the trial. They couldn't explain why they had to face the things that they faced. The only thing that they knew is that they were children of God and they held on to their faith. But at the end of that particular crisis in their life, they find out that everything was actually working for good. It's an amazing scripture here. I read it one more time. It says, and we know that all things work together. Mark the word all. Underline that word all. So not just the good things, all things, not just the things that we like and are pleasurable, but the Bible says all things work together for good. The trial will work together for good. The discouragement we may be going through will eventually work together for good. It could be the persecution. It could be an affliction. It could be something that we're discouraged about, a burden. It may be something we're facing right now, a crisis or a storm. But the Bible is true. All things work together for good for them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So that's what we're going to be looking at today within the short time that we have. And I want to take Joseph as an example. You know, before we touch on Joseph, look at some other people I've mentioned already. Look at Job's life. Who would have thought anything good would come out from what he faced? Look at the crisis that he went through. Look at the enterprise and his business and his children and all that he labored for came to an end in one day. And then you begin to wonder, can anything good come out of this? I'm trying to figure out something. I'm trying to be positive here. I don't see anything coming out good. I don't see any conclusion here that will make it a conclusion that is good or positive. And after all that he lost, the Bible tells us 
that he had this incurable disease that added to his sorrow. But at the end of the day, we are told that God blessed him twice as much as he had before. And many other people in scripture have gone through the same path, the same journey, but God is always true to his word. Maybe you're watching right now and you're going through a situation, a circumstance, a storm, an issue. <clears throat> Maybe there's something right now that you're going through that doesn't seem to show any light. You can't see anything good coming out of it. And you're questioning and you're worrying about it. This is the reason why you're watching right now. And this message is for you. That as a believer, as a child of God, as a son or as a daughter of Zion, remember that all things work together for good. Keep in there, keep holding on, keep hanging on. And by the end, on the other side, hallelujah, you will see the goodness of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. You know, there's a man right now in heaven and his name is Joseph. And if there's one man that can testify to this verse, if there's one person that will preach to you about this verse, if there's one person that can say this verse is true, is Joseph. Joseph will tell us all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. Let's look at the life of Joseph in Genesis chapter number 37. Genesis chapter 37. And I want to read some few verses here. You know the story of Joseph. Joseph had dreams. He had a dream that he was going to lead, that God would elevate him, that God would put him in a position where others will recognize him as a leader. And he had no doubt about the dreams. The dreams were given of God. God had a plan for Joseph. Let me tell you something, my brother, my sister, as you're watching, no matter what you're going through, no matter the storm or the tempestuous wind, I can assure you something. God has a plan for you. Don't allow your present situation to becloud you. Don't allow the present situation to discourage you. Don't allow the present situation to make you to be subjugated to failure. No, God has a plan for you. And God had a plan for Joseph and gave Joseph the dreams. But what Joseph went through, it was as if it would never come to pass. And many a times it's easy to feel that way when we're feeling the pinch and we're feeling the pain and we're going through a crisis, we're going through a situation. It seems to be like a dead end. It seems as if this crisis is going to weigh us down and sink us down and there's no way out. And we begin to think, what's going to happen out of this? How will this ever be fulfilled? But God Almighty remains true to his word all things. And by the time Joseph became who God had promised him to be, he began to look at all the dots and all the crosses to cross the T's. And then he understood that right from the beginning to the very end, to the time of his accomplishment, all things were working together for good. Do not preempt God. Do not say it's finished. Do not say this chapter is closed. Do not say it's impossible. Do not say it will not happen. Do not say the vision God has given you will not come to pass. No, all things for a child of God, for the one who is born of God, for the one who is a daughter or son of Zion, the Bible says all things work together for good. Let's look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 37. And in verse number five, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here, I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed for behold, we are binding. We were binding sheaves in the field and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? That was God's plan. 
That was God's vision. That was God's desire. Are you going to reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his word. So God gave him a vision. God gave him insight into what he wanted Joseph to be. But after the dream, it seems everything was going downhill. Do you feel that way? You know what God has called you to. You heard very clearly. You are not just trying to conjure things together. You knew that God has a plan for you. Maybe regarding your life, your, your marriage, or maybe regarding your career, you, or ministry. You know that the Lord has spoken, but it seems everything is going downhill. I have a word for you. Don't let go. Don't give up. All things work together for good. Stay in there because it is what we seem to see as negative or what seems to be negative, those are actually the stepping stones that God wants to use to bring you to where he has promised you. So from the time he had the dream, everything went downhill and they sold him into Egypt. Look at verses 27 and 28. It says, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Oh, praise the Lord. It's only now with hindsight that we can understand. But when this was happening and they were taking Joseph far and far and far and far away from his father, from his people, from his family, Joseph would have thought, maybe that's the end. Maybe it's not going to come to pass. Maybe the vision I had before now has come to an end. Maybe my brothers have killed that vision. Can I give you a word of knowledge? Nobody will kill your vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody has the power to kill your vision in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They took him into Egypt, but that was part of God's plan because God had told Abraham many years before, had told the forefathers of Joseph, that the nation of Israel at some point will move from Canaan and they will move into Egypt for a while. But Joseph didn't know. Do you know sometimes a disappointment is in fulfillment? Do you know sometimes a storm, a crisis can work for your purposes? Do you know sometimes that when somebody does something to you and there's a persecution, that persecution can be moving you to the will of God for your life? Do you know sometimes when people have disappointed you, that disappointment actually is what God uses to open a new door? And they took Joseph far away into Egypt. Joseph wouldn't have thought that. And they brought him into Potiphar's house in chapter 39 and in verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And verse 2 is very interesting. See how all things work together for good. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Verse 4, And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. He was a slave for Potiphar. They sold him as a slave, but all things worked together for good. Because God had a plan for Joseph, that Joseph was going to be the prime minister, but he needed some business skills, some competencies, some skill sets that will enable Joseph to be able to perform and deliver when he becomes the prime minister. He wouldn't have gotten those skill sets back home. Why? He was daddy's boy. He was the one that had a coat of many colors. He was a sports child, so to say. But God wanted to push him out there. 
so he can learn business and enterprise and be industrious so that when the calling comes for him to be the prime minister, he will have the skill sets available. Oh, praise the Lord. God's wisdom is unfathomable. Do you see how all things work together for good here? So he was in Potiphar's house. But you remember what happened? He eventually was sold. He was taken into prison for not committing iniquity with Potiphar's wife. And he was taken into the prison. And then Joseph would have thought, oh, I was just building up my life now. And now all of a sudden, see where I am now. I'm back to level zero. I was making progress in Potiphar's house. I was going to be the overseer. I was the overseer. I was overseeing his business. Now I'm in the prison. Nothing good can come out. My brother, my sister, never preempt God. All things work together for good. Even what you think is a trial and an affliction and a tempest and there's a wave and there's a storm, all things work together for good. When somebody rejects you, all things work together for good. Somebody you had wanted to marry and now says, no, I don't want to marry you any longer. Do not worry. As a child of God, all things work together for good. You prepared for that interview. You knew you were supposed to get that job. Everybody was looking forward to you to get in that job, to get in that new post where you were. And they gave it to somebody else because of politics or for, or for any other reason, and you're so down and crushed, do not worry. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord. As long as you're a child of God, you know why? It is in that prison that Joseph got the connection he needed to be in the palace. Hallelujah. Come on. God is so great. It is in the prison that he got that connection. If he had remained in Potiphar's house as the overseer of his business, he would have thought, oh yes, this is going on well, but no. Many a times God will use the platform of a trial, of a test, of a storm, of a tempestuous wind. He will use those platforms to bring you, to elevate you. So he was taken into the prison. It was in that prison he got the connection. But it's even more than that. All things work together for good. In Potiphar's house, God gave him the grace to develop his business skills, his industrious skills. God gave him the grace to have that skill set, the competencies required to do business and finance and economics as he was in Potiphar's house. But if he was going to be the prime minister, he will also need human resource ability, the capacity to lead people, and he needed that also. And where is the better or the better training place than in the prison? And that's what God gave him the, the opportunity. So he began to lead people, manage prisoners in the prison. God is amazing. So that when he gets to that place, he has the business skills, he has the human relationship skills. He's able to have both combined together and then he'll be a robust leader. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8 is wonderful, verse 28. All things work together for good. And I want to assure you, it will be so in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. If you go to chapter 40 and verse 23, chapter 40, verse 23. So here he is now in the prison and he's there and we're told that he was actually the leader of the prisoners. He had been given that responsibility to look after them and he gave the interpretation of the dream for, to this butler and uh, the baker. And unfortunately, the butler forgot about Joseph. Joseph said, when you come out, please remember me. In chapter 40 and in verse 23, it says, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Oh, here we go again. I thought I was gonna be set free. I know this man had access to the king. And if he can just recommend me, just speak on my behalf. I've done him a favor. I've given him the interpretation of his dream. I'm sure he'll remember me and he forgot. And probably Joseph would have thought again, here we go again. I've been left out. I've been forgotten. I've been abandoned in a strange land, foreign land, foreign country, foreign culture. What good can come out of this? But God is amazing. You know why? If the butler had remembered Joseph immediately. What would have happened? Joseph would have been released. 
Joseph would have gone back to his family and Joseph would be nowhere to be found when the king, Pharaoh, had the dream that required interpretation. Sometimes when there's a delay, it will work for your good. I say, my brother, my sister, sometimes when there is a delay, it will work for your good. Sometimes God may put a stop because he wants to work for your good. Sometimes God may say, not yet. Even though you put all your resources, all your energy, all your time, all your effort, all your sincerity, all your capacity, you're putting everything and there seems to be no reward. There seems to be as if there's no recompense to what you're doing and there's a delay if you're a child of God, it will work out for your good. So God allowed the butler to forget about Joseph so that Joseph will still be there when he will be required. Hallelujah. All things work together for good, for them that love the Lord. Now you see, eventually Pharaoh had the dream. He required somebody to give him the interpretation. And guess what? Joseph was there. Hallelujah. Many years before, he had that dream. He didn't know that dream was about to come to fruition. He didn't know that being sold into Egypt was part of God's purpose. He didn't know being put in the prison was part of God's purpose. He didn't know that being forgotten for two years by the butler was part of God's purpose. He didn't know that being inside Potiphar's house was part of God's purpose. God is wonderful. Do not preempt. God has not forgotten you. I said God has not forgotten you. I'm telling you that right now as you're listening, God is giving you the grace. It's not a coincidence to listen to what word, to the word that he has for you today because he wants you to know that the vision and the desire and the goal that he has for you, that you're looking forward to, that you eagerly want to see fulfilled in your life, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. So they brought Joseph out. Chapter 41 chapter number 41, and I'm going to read from verse 14, 41, 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Then he gave the interpretation of the dream. Look at verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, verse 38, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to unto my word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Hallelujah. It came to pass. God is great. So all those things that happened in Joseph's life was for a reason. All things work together for good. You know, the cherry on the cake is this one. Chapter 45, verse 3. This is for you, my brother. It's for you, my sister. Chapter 45, verse 3. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth not my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him. They were surprised. You know the whole story. And it came, it came to pass. When they were selling him, they didn't know. All things work together for good. It came to pass. And they saw Joseph, now the prime minister, the vision God gave him. I said, your vision will not die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother. It has come to pass. I'm telling somebody today the word of knowledge, it will come to pass in your life. Do not get tired, do not be discouraged, get up, do not quit. I said it's not over, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me, he understood it now. All things work together for good. God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years had the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be airing nor harvest. And God sent me before you, hallelujah. He now understood 
all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. It's God. God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you, I love this, that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt, it came to pass. Hallelujah. It came to pass. Against all odds, it will happen in your life, dear viewer. It will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that you're believing the Lord for, that you're looking out unto God for, that hasn't materialized yet, or probably it seems everything is working against it. Joseph has a testimony. I pray you likewise. You will have a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. Isn't our God wonderful? Isn't he great? And many other characters in the Bible, you find it likewise also that God fulfills his word. God is giving you a word today to encourage you, to strengthen you, to uphold you, and to let you know that all that the Lord has purposed for your life, against all the odds, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. And even the crisis, the storm that you might be going through or the discouragement, all things will work together for good in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this word. And we pray your word will be fulfilled in the life of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, brethren. Thank you.